My angle tonight is about us. And by, by that I mean us Kenyans. Just yesterday we had that big ceremony over there at the Bomas of Kenya, the historic venue that provided some of the raw material for what is now our constitution. With typical Kenyan pomp, we launched the 150-something page document that, if passed, would change many fundamental provisions of the 2010 constitution. Indeed, today, the standard newspaper in its headline called it the new game plan, while the nation was a little more declaratory, terming it as a fresh start. But before we pop too many champagne bottles, allow me to present some home truths tonight. The first one is that the BBI will not be our savior. And that is not because of what it contains or does not contain. As a matter of fact, the BBI report is a great document and under the circumstances, one with immense potential to bring the country together and assure a unity for many years to come. But I insist it won't help. This is because as Kenyans, we don't like documents, we don't read them, and we don't live by them. Let me explain. I'm tempted to start with the independence constitution, which provided for a neatly devolved parliamentary system of government with a bicameral parliament and an elected assembly in each of the provinces. But this would make the story a bit too distant, so I will go back to just 2008. On the back of the deadly post-election violence, and yes, after a handshake, we got what was called the National Accord, which gave birth to a number of processes and, yes, a number of documents. I have in mind the Krigler report that diagnosed our electoral problem as simply a question of bad manners. The Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission, which documented our bad manners over the years and put it in a voluminous report that has never been made public, let alone being implemented. I have in mind also the 2010 Constitution, a document with robust chapters on the sovereignty of the people, the Bill of Rights, the national values, leadership and integrity, public finance, and I could go on. These documents are written in some of the best English you can ever find in this country. More importantly, they make some of the most profound prescriptions that could change our lives for decades to come. But guess what? Many of us have never read these, and those who have never quite live by them, for the most part at least. Some of those documents provided for the very things we are cheering in the BBI report, such as the need for inclusivity, the fight against corruption, the need to get our elections right, and so on. And that is my point tonight. We can craft and adopt the BBI report as many times as we like. We can even take it to a referendum and mobilize a 100% vote for it. But unless we change our manners, Yes, that basic instinct that tells us to just do the right things will come back to this very same place a few years from now and look for another BBI. Only this time it will have a different name. So let me say this. Please, let's read that BBI document. If we like it, let's pass it. If we pass it, let's do what it says. I repeat, let's just do it. That's my angle tonight.